just like you don't care. Amen. But in your heart, you know you need someone who will be there. You know you need somebody. Mm -hmm. To love you and share your pain. And not because of your name. Without you, love, you're on a road. Going nowhere. Going nowhere. Coming up next is me, Pastor Velma Biggers with Believe Again Ministries.
early this week. And I was so grateful that everything you said was so enlightening, that we had to go to Bible study, that we talked about the elder Jeffrey Steele Mitchell, that the Lord was saving, that he was able, and that he had enough faith, and he believed that God was going to do it. And when God did it, we were excited about him doing it. But see, I didn't have to jump up and catch the chills or, or be uh, 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 catatonic or everything of that nature. God knew in my heart. So when I spoke out of my mouth, God, thank you. Thank you. He knew that that came from my heart and that I was genuinely grateful for what God had did. Because there are so many people who don't make it through that surgery. There are so many people who don't have the opportunity. They don't know how to call on God. And some of them, even when we do, God gives another answer. And we've got to be okay with that too. But in this situation, God says yes. So Lord, I just want to thank you. Even as his word goes out, I want to thank you for what you've done and encourage my brothers and sisters to be grateful. Sometimes we need to be grateful for the small things because he said, if you know how to treat the small things, then God will give you increase. So we have to be grateful for what he did. So it's a hard issue. Last week we had talked about, we had put the challenge out there. And we said, well, okay, Lord, I want you to show me something about my heart this week. And I, I know that if I could see a show of hands out there, there would be a show of hands out there that would say, yes, God showed me. And no, it wasn't the prettiest thing, though some of us may have gotten a beautiful report. In my situation, I was driving. Once again, God often talks to me then. I was driving down the street, and um, it came to me that I wanted to have some words with this particular person. And so this person had been involved in an atrocity that had happened uh, with my daughter. And I try to be as transparent as I can with you because I, I know that sometimes if you know someone who has gone through or experienced something that you have experienced, sometimes it gives a greater weight or a greater witness to what you're going through at that time, and it encourages your faith. Well, I, we had a situation where a young lady uh, when my, my daughter had had some things happen, she was molested. Can I just say that? My daughter was molested. How many of you have had your children molested or your children have been hurt or, or wounded? And as a parent, your first reaction is that I should have been there. I should have protected them. Well, even in this situation, I did the best that I could, but things just like this bad things happen. But it was, I confronted the people who had been responsible for this act. But it was one person that I had not had the opportunity to confront. Now this happened, I lost my daughter some years ago. But in my mind, in my heart, do you know that I was carrying that thing around, that I still had to have some words with that person? And the Lord let me know, why are you carrying this burden? And she's already gone. She's no longer hurting. She's no longer in pain. She's no longer dealing with unforgiveness. She's no longer dealing with the tragedy. But mother, you're still alive. And while you have the opportunity to share the good news, there's a part of you that's preoccupied with getting this person straight, with confronting this person. Now, I had the intention to do it in love. So listen carefully. I had the intention to do it in love. Nevertheless, I had the intention 
of bringing it up. Something that I had released to God. Because I told him, I said, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them all. And God, I release this to you. Now God showed me that I hadn't released it at all. That I was walking around with it in my heart because I was determined that I was going to have this conversation and confront this person with that. And God let me know. He said, see, it's in your heart. You never released her. You never let me handle it. You never let go of it. So here I am carrying around baggage, junk that I don't have to carry around because it's over and it's done when we give the thing to God. And we have to understand that. We've been talking about matters of the heart. And that was one of the things that had been on my heart. One of the many things that God showed me was on my heart. And there were some others, too, that he showed me that I had in my mind that I was going to get them straight, too. Okay? After I <laughs> after I'd given it to God, now I'm going to get them straight. And I'm telling you, don't do what I did. When you give it to God, give it to God. Release it. Release it and let it go. Somebody needs to release it. There's a liberty that comes when we release. I promise you, there is a liberty that comes when we truly give that thing to God. Because we're saying, God, we know that not only do you know what to do with it, but you know what to, how to fix it. And Father, you said, vengeance is yours, that you should repay, you would repay. So if that's what's needed, God, I'm giving that to you. But I bring that up because I want to talk to you just a little bit about how we get in some of the places that we do and believe again. And why I encourage you so much to believe again. There are so many things that have happened in our lives, even from the time we were a child, that we're carrying baggage and we don't even know. I like the commercial that they have now. Uh, it's a car insurance commercial where they are actually uh, showing this car driving through the city and it's picking up all kind of people and junk and and, and trash that it should be what it's in, in the car is trying to travel with all of this extra weight on it and that's what it's like when we do we try to carry things that God never meant for us to carry sometimes we're not aware of it but we need to know and go back to why is it that I can go to church on Sunday and have a wonderful time or listen to a wonderful message and shortly after that, that same familiar feeling starts coming back. That's because there's something in us. This time it's not the pastor, the preacher, the teacher. There's something in us that has not been dealt with. I'll give you an example. When I was a little girl, maybe about three or four years old, I, I talk about myself because I don't always like to bring other people's business or talk about other people folk and this stuff I know when I was about four years old how many of you know that leaders don't always know what they're doing I'm talking about teachers I'm talking about uh, pastors I'm talking about all types of leaders we don't always know we are people too and we make bad decisions and sometimes those decisions impact the lives of other people well, I had an experience when I was about five years old, four or five years old. But when I grew up, my parents didn't have a lot. It was nine children. And they did not have a lot to give us. So I didn't have the best of clothes. I maybe have had maybe one or two outfits, two outfits. And, you know, my parents did the best. We were always, we always ate. We were always clean. We were always fed, you know. But I didn't have the things that would make me stand out and be acceptable. I wasn't even pretty, okay? 
So I wasn't one of those, oh, bless God, but I wasn't one of those that people would, would, would choose to be their little girlfriend or their little boyfriend. And I remember being in kindergarten. And we had a period where we called, they called it gym, but during this period, it was so, it's so, it was so sexist. When you look back, it was just so many things we did wrong. They would take all the little girls, put the little girls in a circle, and then the little boys would walk around, and they would pick a little girl from the circle that they wanted to dance with. Now, being four or five years old, not being the cutest thing, not having the best clothes. Can you imagine how I must have felt? Can you imagine what it feels like to be rejected? What it feels like to be better than, to be less than accepted or appreciated? Or Can you imagine what that felt like? And this went on and on and I remember feeling that feeling I remember every time it came to that class the the feeling that I had in my stomach the pain the anguish the anxiety the panic the confusion the distress all of those things I felt when it became time because I knew I was probably not going to be one of those that would be picked or I would be one of the last ones to be picked Time goes on. I didn't realize that what, what attached itself to me at that time was rejection. This was a doorway for rejection to come into my life. So now I'm walking around and I'm carrying rejection. And rejection doesn't just come by itself. There are other things that come with rejection. With rejection, you are wounded. The wound happened when you placed me in a position where you allow people to make a decision as to whether or not I was valuable or not. Let me say that again. The wound happened when you placed me in a position that allowed other people to make the decision as to whether or not I was valuable or not. And as a result, it was a doorway for a little girl like me for rejection to come in. And rejection came in. Not only did rejection come in, but it also bought other things with the rejection. It bought all type of things like low self-esteem and fear and fear of rejection. It bought word worthlessness. It bought shame. It bought insecurity, even a type of defilement because people are, are sending a message to this little girl whether or not she's valuable. It brings hopelessness. It bought all of these things and all of this garbage and all of this trash I carried around with me through all of my adulthood until one day the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, in a small, still voice, he said, all of your life you've been trying to get people to approve of you. He said, you don't have to anymore. I approve of you. I was an adult when he said that. And when he said that, I just began to cry because I knew that that was truly the Holy Spirit speaking to me, telling me that you don't have to. Because see, when you feel that way, when you feel rejected and shame and hopeless and worthless. When you feel all of those things, you'll accept anything. Come on here, somebody. You'll accept the, the in almost anything anybody gives you. And there were some times in my life that I can look back and I experienced things I should never have accepted. 
things I should never have eaten that was put before me, I ate. But the injury began back when I was five years old. Some of you right now, you're struggling. You're struggling because some of the very things that I mentioned to you, you feel yourself. You don't feel worthy. You don't feel important. You don't feel as if anybody cares and you feel shame and all of those things. But I've come to tell you today that the good news is that just like Jesus told me, I'm telling you, he said that you don't have to have men approve of you. I approve of you. If we can ever get that in our head, if we can ever get that in our hearts, then and only then will we begin to experience the liberty that we need to experience can I just say it for what it is? There are so many women out there that will choose let anything come. Any, any, just because he's a man. Some men, just because she's a woman. Because after all, I don't deserve any better. After all, this is as good as it's going to get for me because I am a rejected one. I don't fit in anywhere. Nobody wants to deal with me or bother with me. Hallelujah. So I accept anything. When God is saying no. I chose you. And look. You didn't even choose yourself. I chose you. Before the foundation of the world. I chose you. We have been. Our main scripture has been coming from the book of Proverbs 4 and 6. Which says. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. We've also been reading and studying and meditating on the scripture in Deuteronomy that says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy, with all thy soul, and with all your might. And then we see the same scripture for those of us who say that the old scripture was then and it doesn't have anything to do with now. Then why is that same scripture re repeated in, in the book of Mark? and says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength shall you love the Lord. This is the first commandment. So what God is telling us is if you love me first, if you put me first, then all the other voices that are telling you that you are not acceptable, that you're unworthy. All of the other voices that remind you of your past, all of the other voices that remind you of the shame and the, and the things that you did that you would never want anybody to know, I want you to know, first of all, that there's nothing that you have done, nothing that you have done that God does not already know about. There's nothing that we've done that God did not know we would do it before we do it. And yet he called us by name. You didn't choose God. Let's, let's, let's get rid of that right now. You, we didn't choose God. God chose us. God chose Israel. And he said, I didn't call you because you were great in number. He said, I, in fact, you were the least. You were the smallest of them all. But I called you because I set my heart and my love upon you. And I called you to be mine. And one thing about God, when God gets into a relationship with you, then he sticks with that thing. He's not like some of us that'll throw your little dress to the side and it means nothing. He's not like some of us that will, will say, well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not important. Whatever you did is not important. He gave his blood. He died for us so that anything that you do would be covered. But if you love the Lord your God with all of your heart, then you won't want to do the things that are evil. You'll want to do the things that will please him. 
and you have ceased from sin because you're no longer the person that you used to be. I just want to encourage somebody out there today, right now. You used to be in church and you were faithful in what you did. Hallelujah. And you fail. You fail and you feel like you can't get back up. You may have had a relationship with someone in the church or whatever else, whatever it is that you have done, whatever it is, we need to, you need to know that God has forgiven you. He's forgiven you. I have a, I want to give you a telephone number if you want to call in and make a comment. The telephone number is 248-796-8241. Let me give that again. It's 248-796-8241. But I want to encourage your heart today that if you've served the Lord and you've fallen and you can't get up, maybe it was somebody even in leadership that you fell with. Maybe it was someone in leadership that talked you into that. Maybe it was some maybe it was just some someone else in the church or even outside the church. But you've done something that you said that you would never do. And now because you reject you, you feel like God has rejected you too. And God is saying, I have not rejected you. But with loving kindness, have I drawn you so you can repent for whatever it is that you may have done to cause yourself to fall away from God and get back up and get back in the race because this world needs you. The brethren need you. The body of Christ, we need you. We need what God has given you. We need you because we're waging a war like never before. I've never seen anything in my life like what we are witnessing today. And we need everybody to do what they're supposed to do. So it's time for you to repent right now. Ask God to forgive you. Forgive me, God. And ask the Holy Spirit, walk with me. Help me, strengthen me, teach me so that I don't go back into the things that I used to do. So that I'm not like the dog that eats his own vomit. So that I don't return to the place that God has bought me with. God, I need you. Hallelujah. I just feel right now, I feel right now that there's somebody that's crying out. Oh my God. Hallelujah. You may be sitting with some people and you, you, you don't want to express yourself, but what's really going on in your heart and your mind right now. But I, I'm, I'm going to help you a little bit because I sense and I'm picking up that this is you, that this is you, and you're asking God to help you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray. Lord God, that whoever these are, because there's more than one, oh God, just like you spoke to me and you told me that I don't have to get other people's approval. Father God, just like I fallen, Lord God, and I've had to ask you, God, to forgive me and to help me to get back up. Holy Spirit, just like you've had to come and comfort me, Lord God, comfort me. So that I would get up and continue in what you've given me to do. Lord, I'm asking in the name of Jesus. I'm touching and agreeing with those right now. That find themselves in that place where they need help. They need help. They need help. And a lot of that help that they need is coming from within. Father, they need you to do a work on their heart even as you do a work on my heart. Father, help us and teach us how to release things to you and to allow you to do the work. 
If we remember the people, the dry bones, all the life had been just drained from them. There was nothing. There was nothing. And then, but God, you raised them up. So, Father, I'm speaking to dry bones right now. I'm speaking to dry bones right now. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to those that are in the act of doing what you shouldn't be doing right now. I'm speaking to those that don't have the strength to get back up. I'm speaking to those that don't feel that they're worthy and that God doesn't love them anymore. I'm speaking to those that are confused because of the warfare in their flesh and the spirit. I'm speaking to those that are confused and don't understand that that warfare is natural. It's normal. It comes with the territory that as long as you're on this earth, you're going to struggle. Your flesh is going to want to do one thing. But the spirit, the Bible says that the, that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That you're going to struggle and I encourage you that you are not being touched. You're not going through anything that your brothers and sisters in Christ are not going through right now. You may not, you may to look at them, may not know what they're going through, but they're going through. The difference is that they know that God is bringing them out. They know they may not put their hand on it right now, but that it's already a done deal. And you've got to do that now. You've got to believe that now. So I'm asking you if that is you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If that is you, if you're carrying baggage, if you're carrying all kinds of junk that has nothing to do with anything, it's just stopping you from moving forth in the things of God, if the devil has been whispering and bringing these things back to you, back to your memory, if he's been harassing you and sending and tormenting and sending you nightmares and dreams and talking to you, I rebuke that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I declare and decree no more, devil, no more. And if that's you, then I, wa I want you to Take a step of faith. I want you to do a prophetic sign, symbol, if you will, and just stand to your feet, wherever you are. Just stand to your feet. It will stand to your feet and lift your arms. This is, this, is, this is where it's crucial here right now because you can either be concerned with those that are looking at you. You can be concerned with, with people who might laugh or think you're crazy. Or you can be so serious that you need God to deliver you. You can be so serious that it doesn't matter what they say or what they do. You have decided that as for me and mine, we will serve the Lord. And you will stand to your feet and just lift your hands toward God and say, God, it's me. God, she's talking to me this morning. God, I'm a mess. God, I need you to help me to come out of this mess, God. I know my heart is jacked up. I know that I'm messed up. But Lord, I know that you're the only one who can untangle me and get me back into right relationship with you. All I want is right relationship with you. I want teach me to love you with my whole heart, God. Teach me even when I make a mistake that I can get back up, Lord God. Repent. And Lord God, that I, that I haven't lost any of your love. Help me, Lord God. Because I know that I'm called. I know who I belong to. And I know, God, that there's a work you called me to do. Hallelujah. If you've done that with me, begin now to walk in your victory. Begin to walk whenever the devil brings it back to your mind, what you've done. And he'll bring it back. Tell them it's covered by the blood. Tell them it's covered by the blood. And remind him of his future in the lake of fire. And I assure you, he'll get up off your back then. But we've got to walk and we've got to trust and we've got to believe God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're carrying excess baggage. Hallelujah. Some of you may be carrying fear. There are many, many, many different types of fear. We're going to talk about that one day. There is even fear of rejection, fear of spiders. I've known some people that were desperately afraid of spiders. But God is calling us to have dominion in the earth. And yet we're afraid of a little teeny weeny spider or, or something, uh, some other creepy crawler. What we need to understand, that it's not the spider. It's what, it, it's what the spider represents. The spider represents fear. So we have to not fear. He said, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Amen, amen, amen. So many things that we need to talk about in the future because we're going to walk in our liberty. I am going to walk in my liberty. And you need to say that you're going to walk in yours. Why? Because God knew you before the foundation of the world. And he still called you and he still loved you. So if God can love you and forgive you, who are you? that you can't love you or forgive you. Who are you? Are you better than God? Are you better than God? Have you paid a better price, a dear price? Have you purchased anything for yourself? Nothing. But he paid a dear price on Calvary. I want you to get back up. And we're going to talk about, continue to talk about matters of the heart because the heart is what is keeping us from moving in the things of God. And when God said the first commandment to love the Lord thy God, what he was saying is he wanted intimacy. He's saying that I don't want anything to block, nothing to block my relationship with you. Nothing. Because the truth of the matter is God never turned his back on us. God never stopped talking. We can't hear. Because we're in our flesh. And we're in our flesh because we've accepted the lies that have been given to us from other people and from situations and circumstances that have happened to us from when we were even in the womb. There were things that were spoken over us in the womb. We were born carrying baggage, some of us. Some of it's hereditary. Some of it's words spoken over us. But I promise you that if we learn to release it to God, that everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just praise Him for just a moment. Just a moment. Just thank Him. Just thank Him. Just thank Him for what He's done. Thank Him for what He's doing. Thank Him for where you're going. Hallelujah. Thank Him. Thank him, give him praise, give him praise. Because see, I'm not about playing. If God said it, I believe it. You need to get to a place, if God said it, we believe it. Hallelujah. I'm going to invite you here again with us next week, every Saturday at 11 o'clock. We'll come together for Believe Again. Again, I'm Pastor Velma Biggers. My heart is delighted when I can share with you because there have been so many things that I have gone through, so many things that you have gone through. That's why I'm asking you. Call in sometimes. Tell us what God has done for you and so that you'll encourage the hearts of other people. But sometimes there are people, unless they see somebody who has gone through some things, they're not as quick to believe it. I'm telling you, in front of you is a woman who's been through many things. And I'm sure you've been through many things. But God, the Bible says many of the, are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God delivered them out of them all. He said man is born a few days, a few days, and full of sorrow. This is the life that we live. But the wonderful thing is that we're here for purpose and that God is going to be glorified with our life. 
because there's nothing that we do that's in vain when we serve God. So it's work it's worse it's worse it's worth the press. The woman with the issue of blood, she pressed until she got her breakthrough. I want to encourage you to press until you get your breakthrough because I've got mine in many areas and I know that God is able. So I want you to tune in next week. I'm going to pray as I pray and we close the show out for today. I want you to meditate upon the things that have been said today and remember that God has the final say that the junk that has been words that have been spoken to us that are not of God things that have happened to us that are not of God that those things do not have to dictate our life they are not who we are we are who God says that we are now with your heart head bowed Father in the name of Jesus Lord God we just thank you and bless you God for this opportunity to hear a word. Father, some of us won't go into a church. But Father God, we'll listen to your voice over the radio, on TV. We'll listen to you, God. And Father, as you bring us a word because God, you know what we need. So Father, we thank you for that word today, that rich word that says, God, that I've got to learn how to release Romo Shanda Raba She Itababa Zanda Remo Konda Rabasi Rima Shendere Kenomo Sata Release it A Shendorobo Kosata I tell you to release it to God Give it to God Give that anger to God Give that anguish to God Give that unforgiveness to God Give it to God. Let God settle the score. Let God handle it. Where you've been wrong, let God do it. Let God do it. Hallelujah. Because when God does it, he does it right. Hallelujah. I'm leaving with you today. I want you to trust him. Trust God. Trust him with your pain. You can trust him. Hallelujah. When you're on the mountaintop. You can trust him even more in the valley. Trust him with your heart. Give him your heart. Trust God with your heart. You can't give your heart to people, but you can give your heart to God because he's the great God, the awesome God, the one that loves you, the one who will never forsake you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He said, when I saw you polluted in your own blood, I said, live. So we're calling the soldiers, get up, get up, get up. You're hearing the voice of the Lord telling you to get up. Release what you need to release. Let go of the baggage. Hallelujah. Get back in your position with a fervency that you never had before. I encourage you to be angry at what the devil has done. To be angry at how he continues to bring back to your remembering the pain. Be angry, hallelujah, and give God the glory, hallelujah. Because what you've asked for is already done. Come on right now, right there. Close out the show, giving your own personal praise right now because he's worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor to the only wise God be now dominion and power both now and forever. We love you. Now we are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power
The Bible tells us that we have not because we ask not. So we ask today that our joy and your joy may be full. Support Worship Center Radio by going to www.worshipcenterradio.net and on the right side, click the Donate Now area. Send your love offering that we may continue to broadcast throughout the world and to bring you programming that elevates you to the next level in God. We have put the great commission given to us by our Lord Jesus in action. We thank you in advance for your financial support.